The orcs were on the move. For weeks, the forces of the Imperium of Man had been clashing with the Greenskins, and despite victories mostly belonging to the Imperium, part of the orc horde had managed to get its way into the city. After a makeshift defense force was unable to keep them out, a second army was out for blood at a different flank on the battlefield to head towards the city. And this army was even bigger than the one that attacked the wall, including having motorized weapon support and a few of their walkers. The Imperial Guard that was stationed here had one big disadvantage. Their artillery had broken down due to earlier attacking attempts and all that was left was infantry, making this a sure loss as the other army at least had turrets and armor at its disposal. But word had it that the Baneblades were heading their way, surely shredding the orcs once they would arrive. They would be there in just a few minutes, so they just had to hold out for a short amount of time. But even a few minutes can be too much to ask when facing a horde of greenskins that all traverse upon you at the same time. Instead of trenches, the Imperium of Man had a few tiny barricades and some last minute cover with sandbags to protect them. But the protection was laughable. As the orcs traversed the field, with every last one of them screaming to their heart's content, sounds of dying Imperial Guard could be heard amongst it. The Imperial Guard behind the barricades were lined up nicely for the orcs to slaughter, as many of them died before they were even able to fire a single shot. Those that were able to muster the courage to peek above the protective cover were able to find their targets more easily as there were no craters present, but they did not get a lot of time to aim and fire. But the Imperial Guard held their line with very few men fleeing, much to the approval of the commissars that were present. But another reason for this was probably because if they would run, they would die even quicker due to being in the open and a much easier target. The Imperial Guard that were straight ahead of the orcs and parallel to the ones behind the protective barriers also opened fire as their distance was still far enough to where they could take a few more seconds to pick their targets. The Commissars here vowed that they were the true force of firepower in this army, whereas the ones behind the barricades were mere distractions for the orcs so that they could be slaughtered by the men here. And though indeed the men stationed here were able to mow down the first row of orcs that headed their way, the tidal wave of greenskins that followed soon proved too much for them as well. Literal chunks of man were being spread all over the battlefield. The ease at which they died increased as fewer and fewer men were present. Only a husk of the fighting force that once stood here was left, and all that in a matter of a few minutes. This gave the orcs the room to spread out around the battlefield as the roaring engines of the Baneblade reinforcements could be heard.
the message of reinforcements was received and went through everybody's comms like a ray of hope. As they saw the behemoths roll in slowly, many shouted with joy and praised the Emperor in all its glory. This fueled some to become a bit more aggressive and even careless, with a few in taking the orcs under fire again. Despite their hearts being filled with hope, the orcs did not care for this and blasted many of them into a bloody mess. And with that, the Imperial Guard Infantry Force had virtually been eliminated from this particular battlefield. New reinforcements were behind the Bane Blades, but for now, the tanks would act as battering rams and deal with the orcs as a whole. The horde of orcs headed straight for the Bane Blades, giving the crew inside a good amount of targets to choose from. Though it might seem unwise to those who first lay eyes upon the orc infantry charging tanks, one always has to realize that an orc does not know fear. This can be both a valuable trait, but also a wasteful one. The fire coming from the orcs could not even be compared to pricks of a needle on rock, and those who were still alive behind the barricades now hurried towards the tanks to use them as cover. Not everyone made it in time and those who befell an early death did so in a puff of red blood appearing as smoke. The orcs charged head first towards the Bane Blades, so much so that they did not even get out of the way as it moved forward. Many an orc got crushed like jelly by its heavy tracks that would stop for nothing and no one. The fearsome orcs, all of a sudden, did not seem that tough anymore. The battlefield now was piling up orc bodies left and right, making way for the Imperial Guard that was doing all the dying up until then. With its side gunners concentrating on individual orc infantry, the main gunners would deal with the orc walkers that created a constant barrage of fire which was still not able to even dent the bane lanes outsides. As most of the orcs on the field had been dealt with, more orc shouts could be heard in the distance as a new wave was sent in to deal with the tanks. A foolish and petty attempt at an attack, since none of them had weaponry that could destroy something mighty as a bane blade, but not a single orc hesitated as they ran in there towards bloodshed. At this distance, they were easy pickings for the tank crew, and many died way before they even got close to the tanks. Some of the walkers were still standing, and those in charge ordered them immediately destroyed, as they could be seen as encouragements for more orcs to attack, as they were so easily distinguished on the battlefield. And so it was done, as hell was unleashed upon the orcs commanding these, as they went out in a blaze of fire and scorching heat. And so the battle was won thanks to the input of the Bane Blades, but the overall siege was not yet over. The Bane Blades and reinforcing infantry would continue to secure the outer perimeter of the wall, while inside the city, the Blood Ravens would deal with the orcs they got through. Besides just Blood Raven Space Marines, Dreadnoughts and Whirlwind Artillery would be sent in also. The Imperial Guard had already set up defensive positions in the streets against the orc army that had won at the first battle of the wall. But the streets were narrow, and the forces could not spread out, 
making it more ideal for charging orcs and the Imperial Guard in and of itself even less effective. But this time, they had the Space Marines at their side, and they were confident in their ability to eradicate the orc threat from the city. And then, if successful, the final battle to drive the orcs off the open field would commence.